Mathematics and philosophy are often compared, and it's difficult not to understand why. Some harlots like Bertrand Russell write in the sacred tongue of numbers, whereas with Janusian sleight of hand, have the nerve to indulge in the wretched subterfuge, the word addled bilge, of philosophy's inscrutable word jugglery. Russell and his co-conspirator Alfred North Whitehead had the chutzpah to try and prove that logic and mathematics were the same thing. What a bunch of losers. As sordid as it is that these double dealers have wasted the vast mind space of so many unwitting citizens of this great sovereign nation, it rots the soul knowing their Luciferian efforts have misguided many legitimate humans into believing the alleged discipline of philosophy has any connection to the very real and authoritative field of the study of the subject of maths. This is Kurt Gödel, a stunningly handsome mathematician famous for his beautiful, rigorously QDD'd incompleteness theorems. His titillating, voyeuristic work demonstrated to the world that maths is more pure, more passionate, more powerful than the flimsy, ultimately useless field of philosophy. In comparison, let's take a look at Immanuel Kant. Ew. His writings are dense, difficult to sift through, and burst at the seams with passages in the most booked scholars have failed to pick apart. For someone who yammers on so blithely about the Numenor world, he sure was phenomenally boring. Plus, the guy was racist. None for me, thanks. What's conspicuous about the ethical failings of so-called moral philosophers is that they sabotage, murder, and steal when they believe their purported subject is in danger of being exposed for the balonious hogwash that it is. Kurt Gödel's heroic life of discovery was tragically cut short when philosopher David Hume poisoned his well-seasoned medium-rare steak with confit bialdi and buttery mashed potatoes with a hazardous substance. This act of murder nauseatingly went unpunished because Hume died before the trial. What a swine! There is no progress in philosophy ever. Developments only arriving in the form of abysmal ideas being debunked. Plato, one of the shittiest in the trade, had the gall to think that smart humans wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a real wagon and the shadow of a wagon on the wall of a cave. This was conclusively proven hokum by the fact that everyone can tell the difference. Recuctionist though this may be, it slays in contrast to Aristotle's mischievous tripe. The guy literally hated women. What a bozo. No maths paper has ever clearly verified women's inferiority. Additionally, it is evident that geometry is an inherent property of the universe. While mathematicians are hard at work teasing out the very far reaches of what can even be conceived, philosophers are arguing about gunk, wasting their lives talking about this and that, and it's like, shut up, man. It's not that serious. Let's talk practical applications. Art, finances, architecture, computing, music, and most importantly, shopping. Maths is useful everywhere. It's so good. It's difficult to fill your hands with all of these fantastic reasons to believe it works. Now let's look at philosophy. Nothing? Well, it's clear that maths has won all of the points so far, and we wouldn't even be able to count those points without maths. Lastly, and most importantly, it's very clear that philosophers turn to it when they have nothing left. On physical attractiveness, we have an obvious discrepancy, one that is not only illustrative of the reason philosophers are the way they are, but more importantly, the trauma that leads people to these situations. The most important part is how smart mathematicians are. Terence Tao, who is actually a mathematician, has an IQ higher than 175. This is a massively strong and very smart IQ, which shows him to be very smart and intelligent man. I've never heard anyone talking about Jean-Paul Sartre's IQ, which is clearly just the philosophical coalition trying to recuperate from the fact that despite his completely unearned reputation for being a smart, well-educated subject, philosophy is actually very alienated from the institution of big, developed minds. Studying mathematics can help one with analytical thinking skills, chess, and even on-the-spot mental maths. Now, if we're being serious, then we just can't even consider the possibility that just anyone can study maths. It's a very big decision to start your mathematical journey, and you've got to be a real person to do it right. Not to say that it's some kind of exclusive club that only the best and brightest of society can participate in, but it can't hurt to be an elite, well-funded, and powerful group that have a vice grip over the global economy. In summary, not only is philosophy a frivolous, really shitty thing, but man, I am ashamed as shit that I study it. My father was a reclusive, difficult man. He once said to me, Max, it's a tough world out there, but it's time you join the family business. He brought me to the living room where we moved into the bedroom and then moved into the bathroom. 
and he clicked a secretive button that he had implanted into the house and revealed with great gusto the secret library he had been collecting for years, full of the critiques, the writings of all sorts of philosophers, Nietzsche, even Confucius were involved. And he held a copy of boundary functions and sets of curvilinear convergence for continuous functions, and he got a match and threw it in the fire. And it was then that I understood that I was cursed. That the genetics of life was the only thing that matters. Predetermined fatalistic hell on earth. It's nothing but a failed world that has no reason to exist, but it's forced to exist. There is nothing beyond this world neither, and death holds no release. This life will continue on in an infinite loop, so there's nothing but suffering. You will never know the deepest version of your family, even your loved ones. You only go off the version that they choose to show to you. And that really sucks. Like philosophy compared to maths. <laughs>